Since I started to get the hang of making paper out of grass, I've wanted to try some other natural materials. With it being midwinter in California, leaves are the perfect option. I'm not too sure if this will even work, but I think it'll be a fun experiment. So now I have my bag full of leaves, and these are kind of interesting to me, especially these yellow ones. But they're shiny, and I think the right word is leathery. I'm really curious how these characteristics will affect the paper, if it'll be a good thing or totally ruin the paper. But I have these yellow ones, brown ones, and red ones. Since I have three different colored leaves, my plan is going to be to make three different pulps. So to do that, I begin by sorting the leaves by color. The next thing I have to do is get rid of the stem that grows in the middle of the leaf. In botany, this is called the midrib, but I think it's going to be too thick to break down in my pulp and probably not work very well on the paper, so I'm getting rid of them. I'm doing that just by tearing each side of the leaf and sorting it into a bowl. The next step, just like making grass paper, is to cut the material down into small, about one inch pieces. I usually wear a glove while I do this to avoid cutting myself, but this big glove was not giving me any dexterity. So use one of these. These ones work good. And then I just continue chopping away, cutting up the leaves into tiny pieces. In my leaf pot, I add in some water and sprinkle in some washing soda to get ready for the next step, which is boiling. And just like making grass paper, which I also have a video that goes more into depth, I'm gonna let the material boil for about an hour. Every once in a while, I'll come in and check on it, give it a quick stir and make sure it's not overflowing. While the yellow leaves are boiling for an hour, I use the time to separate the mid ribs from the brown leaves and the red leaves. After the hour is up, I strain out the water, which I'm actually planning on saving. I'm thinking this could be used as an ink or a stain later on. And then I get the leaves out. Unfortunately, with these yellow ones, I think they turned a little too brown, but I have an idea that I think might work, and that's adding hydrogen peroxide to the water. This is something I've read about while researching paper pulp bleaching, and the paper industry itself uses hydrogen peroxide to bleach their paper, although I'm not too sure how it's done over in the paper factories. This is how I'm doing it, and lucky for me, it's actually working. So instead of a brownish, goopy yellow, I've got this nicely preserved, crisp yellow. And now I'm ready to start beating the pulp. A wooden dowel and a concrete paver are my go-to for this step, but these leaves still seemed a little too leathery and weren't breaking down the right way. So I switched methods using a paint scraper and just giving them a whole bunch of chops, and that seemed to do the trick. Once it's all finely mashed up, I like to use my paint scraper and shape it into a little puck so that it's easy to store away in a Ziploc bag. I usually run out of time during the day when I'm making paper, so these guys will sit in the fridge for about a day. 
But before I can call it quits for the day, I need to make sure the rest of my leaf pulp is all mashed up. And since this is my fourth batch of the day, I'm really starting to get the hang of it. Now this is starting to look like a really nice pulp. So just like the other batch, I'm gonna use my paint scraper and shape it into a little puck. And then store it away in a Ziploc bag. And here's the leaf tea that I made. Don't drink it, it's probably really gross and not healthy for you. But like I said, I'm hoping to make it into an ink or maybe a stain for some paper. But I needed to transfer it to this bottle because I couldn't find the lid for the mason jar and I couldn't find my funnel. So I gave this a shot and it worked pretty good. It's now the next day and it's finally paper making day. These are the four different colors I made. The original dark yellow, the bleached yellow, I have the red, and then the dark dark brown. I'll be honest, I'm getting a little bit worried that I don't have enough pulp here to make individual colored papers, but we're gonna give it a shot anyways. I pour the blended pulp into a vat of water, which is just a plastic tub. And then usually I use okra as a thickener or formation agent, but today I'm trying cornstarch. Then I just give it a quick mix. And like I said, I'm getting a little bit worried this is too thin of a mixture that we're not gonna be able to get a yellow piece of paper. Yeah, that's way too thin. No way we can make paper with that. I'm gonna have to move on to plan B. So I've blended up the other pulps just so I can have them ready at hand because for this plan, I'm gonna try and ladle in different colors into the screen. If I can't have one color, I'll see if I can do a dual color piece of paper. I've seen this done before, but it wasn't with experimental leaf paper. And yeah, unfortunately it's just not coming out. It's either too thin or too clumpy. So I gotta go to plan C. Plan C, we're just gonna do a simple piece of paper. I'm adding dryer lint or added fiber and strength. And then we're just gonna mix them all together and blend them. So now the pulps are all just one pulp and I'm using that in the vat. So I really hope that this works because if not, don't have a plan D. I'll have to go back to the drawing board and probably start from the very beginning looking more promising so that's good but let's see how it comes out on the screen
So I don't want to get ahead of myself, but this is looking pretty fantastic. I'm going to drain off the extra water and then bring it over to the couching station and see if it'll actually come off in one piece. And there we go. It's wet for now, but I think that's a piece of leaf paper. Nice. Now that I have a little bit of a better understanding of how this leaf pulp works, I'm just going to dive in and make as much paper as I can with the little bit of pulp I have left. A microfiber cloth is my favorite tool for getting the wet paper off the screen and onto the cloth. And I just use old t-shirts. They seem to do a pretty good job. And then I'll use a sponge and even my finger to make sure it's off all the way. And there we have another piece of leaf paper. Now it's time to get ready to dry the paper. So on a flat board with some felt on the bottom, I'm gonna put each paper, which is still attached to the t-shirt, I'm gonna layer those one by one on top of each other. An extra cloth or t-shirt goes on top and then some extra felt and then something flat I just use a plastic placemat and then some stepping stones so now it's been about a week and I've actually left these drying under all the weight so that they would dry nice and flat but it's also been pretty rainy and cold here so they took a while to dry but they feel nice and dry now, so I'm going to try taking off the papers from the t-shirt. This first one is not giving me a good sign. It's super stuck to the t-shirt, so we're going to skip that and move on to another one that I think might do a little bit better. Very, very carefully, I just use my fingernail and see if it'll come off on the edges. But luckily, it seems like it is. I'm doing this extremely carefully because I work so hard on these pieces of paper. I don't want to ruin them the last second. But eventually I can start to pull them away from the t-shirt. And there's one. I repeat that process with the other pieces of paper using my fingernail to carefully pop them off of the t-shirt. But as I get more comfortable, and it kind of depends on each piece of paper and t-shirt as well, I can just pull them away in that super satisfying pull of paper. But I wasn't so lucky with all of them. A few of them were just too thin. They would not come off at all. And then others came off a little bit, but were just so stuck to the t-shirt it only came off in strips. Let's take a look at the ones that actually worked. So this is it, the final leaf paper. And I wasn't actually sure if this was possible to begin with, but I'm super happy I was able to make anything. I know I wanted to make yellow, red, and brown, but just one is fine with me and it looks pretty good. It looks awesome close up, all the particles of the different leaves. Such a great texture. I was able to make four really, really good ones. So we'll see what I decide to do with those. Maybe some prints or who knows, maybe I'll turn the leaf tea into ink and put something on them. But anyways, that's how I made paper out of leaves. Thanks for checking it out. See you next time.